Hey, good afternoon, y'all. This is Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg with the latest on what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Since we are um, kind of quiet right now on the East Coast side of things, that could change next month. Uh, but before we go any further, um, if you want our latest live streams, which we're going to have as these storms make landfall, please uh, keep it tuned to us on our YouTube channel and subscribe so you get that notification right up here. Ding dong, it'll come ring for you. And visit us at CarolinaWhiskeyXRayAuthority.com. That's CarolinaWXAuthority.com for the latest articles and what we're talking about here in the southeast and uh, in tropical season, of course, what we're looking at for the Gulf Coast here. Um, we'll take a look real quick. Actually, it's about 2 o'clock Eastern, so we may have a new advisory out. But what we see right now, um, no change in intensity in lower at 60 miles per hour. Marco continues to weaken down to 40 miles per hour. And um, that's actually the news that I think everyone in Louisiana, Mississippi probably wanted to hear because the news stories, and we, we jumped on it too, so, you know, I'll take some blame for that. But two hurricanes hitting Louisiana was what we were talking about here. And uh, Marco just has fallen apart, and it's on the way out. Laura, on the other hand, though, has the other thing going for her, strengthening expected here in the next couple of days. And here's why. We've got some crazy warm water across the northwest Caribbean and especially over the central and western Gulf. This is in Celsius, so 30 degrees Celsius is 86 Fahrenheit. Um, we're looking at Laura crossing temperatures no cooler than 86 right up through landfall somewhere up in here. Uh, in the next four days. So we are, we've are we got plenty of warm water for Laura to feed on and intensify once she finally gets away from land. You have to remember that Laura, by the time she got into waters that were warm enough for strengthening, she was dealing with Puerto Rico, she was dealing with the Dominican Republic, with Haiti, and with Cuba, which is the longest island all of them. And uh, she's still, she's a fighter, she's got a lot to her, and we think once she's over the Gulf for two days, she's got a great shot at strengthening quickly into a hurricane and perhaps a major hurricane before making landfall on the northern Gulf Coast. Aircraft recon, um, this is from tropicaltidbits.com, great site by the way. They are getting ready to send, send a plane southward towards Cuba leaving Florida, so we'll have more info soon. Uh, Marco, on the other hand, had a plane in it earlier and um, you know, basically Marco looks like a, it lost a bad fight, it had a bad night of partying or something. The pressure's been rising, the center is just completely naked now, all the weather's way up here off the Alabama coast. I'm going to show you the satellite image and it, you can see the nakedness here. The center is right here. This is the, the uh, mouth of the Mississippi River here, the pilot town, Buras, Louisiana. The center is going to go over them, but they're going to hardly get anything out of it. Just some wind and maybe a little bit of rough surf. All the action's heading up into Florida and Alabama. I mean, look at this radar right here. Um, you can see here's the center, it's coming in and uh, it's going to track and probably fall apart over the coast of Louisiana, probably just inland or right on the coast, maybe around Homer or Morgan City. Uh, but all the rain here is going to continue to just become completely separated from the center. And uh, the heavy rain is hitting places like Pensacola, Panama City, uh, Fort Walton Beach, and, and on inland. So a very disheveled storm. And this is what we want to hear in New Orleans because this is what we're getting right now, probably some liquid sunshine. Probably some sunshine, actually. No liquid sunshine. So that's Marco. Let's let's put him to bed here pretty soon, and let's give him a, a proper burial. And let's go on to our next system. And I'll show you the models real fast, but we don't have a lot of time to, to worry about this one because we got something bigger brewing off the Cuban coastline. Uh, now what's going on with Laura is she is hugging the coast of Cuba, but all the thunderstorm activity pretty much off to her south and southeast. And um, I guess that's good news for Cuba, maybe not so much for the Caymans, not a good day to be there. Um, but we've had some very heavy rain across um, the greater Antilles, including Jamaica even. Um, de definitely uh, what these folks really don't need, especially after the rains we got from Isa Ias here a couple of uh, weeks ago, about four weeks ago now. Uh, and the Cuban radar from uh, Isla del, um, del Rio, I believe it is. Uh, oh, Pinar del Rio, um, which is this big island right here, shows uh, not much going on near the center of the storm. Everything is on the south and east side, uh, but we do have some gusty winds. Um, but this is kind of sparing northwest Cuba the really heavy rains. Um, these mountainous areas can get a lot of rain because they're mountains, um, but the storm is going to be tracking in this direction, and we'll spend some time over far western Cuba tonight. Uh, now this is interesting. I want to show you guys this because I think it comes into play with what we're looking at for our 
final track of Laura, which will be a hurricane, I suspect. Uh, two centers showing up on the ASCAT, which is a satellite image that estimates surface wind. You can see the strongest winds earlier, a few hours ago, were displaced to the east of the center of Laura over water. And you've got two weak areas of low pressure that are kind of doing battle with each other. So the big question I think you need to be asking yourself is which one of these is going to take over? Is it going to be this one or this one? Uh, if it's this one, then Louisiana is definitely more at risk than Texas. But if it's this one, then Texas is more at risk than Louisiana. And of course, there's a chance that where the states border each other, both could be at risk. Um, if you're in Houston, though, and I'm going to show you the European models, I think you definitely have a problem, if, especially if this one takes over. And um, I will say that um, storms love to stay out over water, so any chance they can, they'll reform over water if possible. So the models have been run on this center, but if this new center is, is forming, it very well could take over. And what that means is we're going to see a westward shift in our track, and Houston, you may have a problem. You will have a problem. Um, so the forecast at 2 o'clock, and I'll update it for you, um, the track hasn't changed much. It's still showing intensity will stay about the same as it crosses Cuba tonight and early tomorrow, and then some intensification likely during the day tomorrow on Tuesday, and by tomorrow night it's a hurricane, and by Wednesday night a Category 2 hurricane, and there's some, uh, some talk with the Hurricane Center that there certainly could be more intense wind as it comes on shore. It could strengthen right up till it hits. Category 3 is being thrown out there, so I would treat it as a Category 3. We thought a couple days ago even a 4 or 5 would be possible. I think maybe 4 more likely. 5, I think we're, we probably went too high with it, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, but 3 or 4 is what we're thinking right now. And what I will say is if that southern center takes over, then we're going to be on the western side of this model envelope, and uh, Houston will have a problem. If for some reason the northern center takes over and this gets a shot to the right, then uh, central Louisiana, maybe even southeast Louisiana, will have a problem. But I think right now we're, we're seeing what could be a shift more to the west here in the next couple of model runs. Again, that's a forecast of what's going to happen. I don't know for sure yet, but that's what we're kind of saying at CWA right now. And you can see the model guidance um, tightly clustered in western Louisiana with landfall in less than 72 hours. That would be... Um, less than three days from now, so probably Thursday morning or late to, uh, Wednesday night, um, but still uh, several models going into the Houston area or even farther west, and the European is one of them. Uh, winds uh, are going to be, or pressure with the ensembles in many cases is uh, showing category two or three intensity, a few even to four. Tropical models are a little more intense. Uh, the European, though, earlier today started to pick up on this uh, shift to the west a little bit, and the ensemble members are still having some solutions going down toward Brownsville. I think that's a little extreme, but notice none of the model shows New Orleans getting hit now. They're all either far western Louisiana or um, the upper Texas coast, middle or upper Texas coast, and Houston's right here. This would be a doomsday scenario for Houston with a potential Category 3 or 4 storm coming in. So if you're in Houston right now, you need to be thinking about what you need to do to potentially evacuate by tomorrow. That's what I am going to say. That's, that's my warning to you guys. Intensity forecast, all models showing strengthening, some, of course, more than others. Um, yesterday we had fours and fives. Now they backed off a little bit. We'll have to see, though, of course. Um, that could still change. Um, and, of course, the farther west the storm goes, the more time it spends over warm water. So we may see this coming back up. We may. Um, I will say, though, if the model tries to form this um, storm center farther northeast, then it's going to take a more eastern track. And in this model, the NAM 3-kilometer, um, not the best tropical model. I'm going to show it to you, but just um, take it with a grain of salt. Um, has the intensifying over the central gulf and growing and low pressure um, and an eye forming with landfall near Grand Isle Wednesday around 10 a.m. Central Time and the eye wall going right over New Orleans at lunchtime Wednesday. But that is very far to the east of what most of our models show. So I'm showing this to you just because it's out there and you'll probably encounter it, but we don't expect this to be the um, final end game to this storm. We think the GFS probably has got a better um, chance of getting it right because it's a global model. It typically does better. Um, and it shows um, a, a well-defined eye, Category 3 hurricane, Wednesday night with landfall after midnight south of Lake Charles. Um, but again, I showed you that European model, which was going you know, into near Houston. So it could be anywhere in this zone at this point. The H HMON model, excuse me, um, it's uh, struggling with where the low pressure is. Um, this is 2 o'clock today right now. And then look at 5 o'clock. You know, we had that low here. Now we have a low here. Well, which one is it? 
Um, you can see it goes down to the, to the southwest and bounces back to the northeast, and it's just it doesn't know where it is yet. Um, but once it knows where it is, it should should have a better handle on it. And you can see this um, intensification to hurricane strength on Wednesday, Category 2 by Wednesday night, Category 3 before landfall late Wednesday night, maybe even Category 4. And it's got landfall near Lake Charles and Cameron, Louisiana. Lake Charles is right here. This is Cameron, uh, right at the coast, so just east of Cameron, actually. Um, so, you know, it's... Once it figures out which of these low-pressure systems will take over, I think that'll determine where the track is. If it's farther right, I think uh, this area in Louisiana. If it's farther left, I think upper Texas, including Houston. So Houston, we could have a problem. Um, heaviest rain going to be east of the track of the storm right now because they have the storm track coming through southwest Louisiana, 6 to 10 inches possible here. Um, that could shift farther west over the Sabine River into east Texas, including Bo Beaumont, Port Arthur area. Uh, maybe up into the Piney Woods region. Um, we could see some heavier rain as well coming up the central Gulf Coast with a little bit of energy left over to the east. So New Orleans, this will be a worse storm for you, I think, than Marco was or is right now. So that's where we're at with this. Of course, um, lots can still change, but um, putting you guys on notice in Houston and Beaumont right now and Lake Charles as well. Um, and in Louisiana, be glad that that hurricane warning got dropped and we're seeing the sun right now because it could have been much worse, but we're glad it wasn't. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, for any live videos we'll be doing and invite your friends as well. Y'all be safe and God bless.